If you look up why meteors burn in the atmosphere, you'll see many sources blaming friction. But that explanation, despite it sounding reasonable, is almost entirely wrong. Consider this. If you decompress a gas, it cools down. In fact, if I release the CO2 from this cartridge, it will cool down enough to make dry ice, which is a bit under 100 degrees below zero. However, the exact opposite happens as you compress a gas. Whenever you compress a gas, it heats up. Take a piston for example. As it moves inward, air molecules inside collide with it and bounce off. But because the piston is moving toward them, they rebound with even more speed. More speed means more kinetic energy, and since temperature is just a measure of how fast molecules are moving, the gas heats up. Simply put, when you compress a gas, you're adding energy to it, and that energy has to go somewhere, so it turns into heat. Now, meteors. If I were to ask you why meteors burn up in the atmosphere, you might assume it's because of friction. I mean, they're moving insanely fast through the emptiness of space, then suddenly slam into Earth's atmosphere, forcing their way through the air. That must cause a lot of friction. But it turns out that almost none of the heat comes from friction. Instead, it comes from compression. Meteors are usually traveling between 25,000 and 160,000 miles per hour as they enter Earth's atmosphere. At those speeds, the air in front of the meteor gets compressed so much that it reaches temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun. This creates a plasma of superheated air around the meteor, and some of that heat is transferred to the surface, causing it to melt and vaporize away. Most meteors are small enough to completely vaporize before reaching the ground, but if they're large enough, they can survive the journey and eventually end up in my hands. Meteors that reach Earth's surface are called meteorites, and there's another pretty big misconception about them. You'd think that after falling through a fireball of plasma, a meteorite would be burning hot when it hits the ground, but surprisingly, they could be quite cold to the touch right after landing. Most of the heat it experiences from its journey to the ground is only transferred to the outer surface of the meteor, and as that surface vaporizes, it carries heat away with it. Eventually, the meteor will slow down enough to stop generating plasma, and at this point, it enters dark flight, where it falls at terminal velocity, no longer burning up, just free falling. By this point, it's still high up in the atmosphere, where the air is extremely cold. And this cold air quickly cools down the outside of the meteor before it reaches the surface. Also, keep in mind that meteoroids are already extremely cold before they enter Earth's atmosphere. And the amount of time they spend turning air into plasma isn't long enough for heat to transfer deep inside the meteor. If you remember that famous meteor in 2013 which exploded over Russia, there's plenty of footage of it because apparently every Russian has a dash cam for some reason. But shortly after that incident, reports showed that fragments of that meteorite were found in snow, without any evidence of it melting the snow. However, not all meteorites will be so cold after landing on Earth. More often than not, they will slow down before hitting Earth's surface, but if they're big enough, they will simply have too much mass and inertia for air resistance to slow it down enough to enter dark mode, or dark flight, or whatever. If you hop onto Google Earth and hover over Quebec, you won't have to look very hard to find evidence of this. This is a 214 million year old impact crater, and it's one of the largest on Earth. When a massive asteroid struck, it slammed into the ground with such force that it liquefied the crust and sent a shockwave rippling through solid rock like waves in water. The crust then rebounded and solidified, leaving behind an elevated central peak surrounded by valleys which are now filled with water. What you're seeing here today is the aftermath of a giant asteroid impact, but for many years, people just assumed your mom tripped and fell over here. So yeah, meteors are pretty cool, and if you want to see one, they're actually more common than you might think. Just look up. Unless you're on the International Space Station, in that case you'd want to look down.